What's up, everybody? It's Marcelo Margot here with Nick Sloviak uh, from BKI School of Paintball. We are now looking at the NXL Las Vegas Open layout. It was just released. Um, and so we're excited to get out there and play it this weekend. But before we did that, we wanted to kind of break it down and explain to you guys how we, you know, look at these layouts when they're first released before we have a chance to actually see them in real life. So, um, Nick, you know, you just got the email. We got the email. We're excited. Um, both looking at the same layout here. What do you think? I am jazzed, baby. Spirit fingers. Um, jazzed, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I like I like the spacing of the new bunkers in the middle, but mo I mean, most importantly, I like uh, the fact that the season is upon us. And again, as Marcelo said, this is for BKI. So all of you guys, if you haven't signed up, go to bkipaintball.com. Uh, Marcelo has a code. I think of what, Marcelo18? Marcelo33. 33. 33. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, Nick, Nick, uh, Nick. Uh, 23. What's your number over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick, 23. 23. Nick, 23. So go nice. ahead. You can Perfect. use our, you Either can use one our code. However, guys. Yeah, however, this is free content for everybody, which is cool. I think we're going to be doing the initial layouts for everybody, um, but we will be doing another follow-up. Nick and myself will do a follow-up after we both go and practice with our respective teams this weekend, so we'll have a more in-depth understanding. But, uh, you know, this is just the initial, initial look, and uh, as Nick said, I mean, I'm super excited for the season as well. But uh, let's give the people what they want. Let's give it to what them. So see on this uh, on this layout, my man. The first thing I see is uh, how close the back center is to the start box. Um, it's it's literally probably six feet right in front of you, if that. Um, so it's going to be really easy for you to have two, if not three, people in the back center to shoot lanes. And the one thing I noticed, um, especially after playing the new bunkers, being a taller person, is that uh, having mm -hmm. that new brick in the center of the field, you can see back center to back center. I can see that. I can see my mirror off the break. So it's going right. to be important for me as a back center player, not only to listen to my coach for the codes right before the game starts on what he sees and he's anticipating, but going off what I see and what information I can give to the four other guys I have with me on my line to play that point, whether it's three left, three right. Um, if I see the way people are lining up, are they going to run this way, run that way? Uh, a good example would be if I'm playing against Dynasty and I see Marcelo, and um, Alex Frazier lined up on the Dorito side, depending on Marcelo's body language and Alex's body language, I might be able to interpret which way they're going to go. It's my job as a professional player to anticipate their moves and know their tendencies and then give that information back to my guys uh, right before the point starts. So it's really it's nice for me to be able to see over that spot um, and be able to see my mirror off the break. The other thing I really like off the break um, is with the tall wedges standing up in the center of the field, um, just off to the, the middle, you're going to be able to use your gun to step out to the Dorito side and the snake side and edge the back center and edge people out. You're going to really, really be able to use your gun as a moving bunker and joust with people, uh, whether they're your mirrors or cross field off the break, you know, within the first five, five seconds, at least, uh, the lanes don't look like there's really much because of those tall wedges, the pins and the can up on the Dorito side to shoot people going out. Uh, there probably is a decent shot um, a little bit off the back center towards the snake corner. But I think that wedge, uh, as most of you know, as soon as you come off the break and you get right into your bunker, your bunker blocks out a lot of what you'll see. So I think mm -hmm. um, those that play behind their gun and can dodge some paint are going to be highly rewarded here if they put good shots down the field, especially on the snake side to that snake uh, tower, the snake insert and the corner. Mm -hmm. And then I think on the Dorito side, if you step out wide right away and use the can, <clears throat> that center can and that center wedge, uh, you might be able to get a quick shot on the Dorito one player or the corner player. But at the same time, you're going to expose yourself. Uh, you're going to have to move and, move and shake. So that's, that's what I see kind of right away. Um, looking at the tapes, I like how the corner on the Dorito side, you can... Uh, not see players making the move up to the inside. So if you go from the Drudo 2 to the Drudo 3 to the Drudo 4, you can make that move protected. Um, and then on the snake side, looking at the grid, it looks like the snake corner can shoot down the tape and stop people making the move down the wire. So those are those are the two big things I think I'd look at right there is the lanes on the break, and then what are the corners can stop uh, their opponents from moving down the tape. Totally. Um, you make some really good points about the uh, lanes, and I actually like what you talked about um, 
you know, in the back center as a, as a back center player, especially on this field, being able to see your opponents um, and actually trying to read them before the point even starts. That's a nice little uh, tip. As for the lanes, you're definitely right. It looks like those blind, those little blind spots are going to be, you know, where you have to kind of go and ride or die if you want to pick up some kills. It looks like the back center is going to be pretty difficult to get shots anywhere. Um, maybe there will be a shot over that little uh, wind bunker on the snake side into the, the snake one landing zone or the snake corner. Hard to really tell. Um, I always like making these kind of moves. If you, if you dig out to that snake side can off the break, you might be able to, if you're fast enough, you might be able to then shoot over the little wind bunker into uh, like a snake runner or something like that. Catch them either diving in or maybe clip their pack over that, uh, that snake one beam. Um, so for lanes... Yeah, I think you pretty much covered them. Definitely tough to see until we get out there and actually have the, you know, have the field in front of us. Um, dude, this Dorito side looks really fun, though. Yeah. It's traditional on both sides, actually. A straight snake where you have a corner that can see all the way down the line. So that corner bunker on, on the snake side and Dorito side is going to be really powerful. Um, making moves down the Dorito side, it looks like it's all pretty much heads-up gunfights. Um, the only kind of cross shot that it looks like might start to come into effect might be that that wedge on the uh, snake side they might be able to sneak some paint um in the gap from the dorito two to the dorito three but definitely that center brick i could see that being utilized to stop the dorito side for sure um but nothing nothing really cross field so i i looked to that side playing pretty fast and actually same for the snake side there's nothing that can really stop movements you know once you get in there it's all you have to do is look down the wire and put your mirror and you can get all the way to that three. Um, and it looks like making the jump to the big brick might not be too difficult. So, yeah, I look at this field to play really fast. Um, the corners are going to be in effect. It's, it's definitely an old school style field, heads up, gunfights, and um, I think you're going to see a lot of attacking. Uh, through the center, looks like you could get creative. Those, uh, I like how they put those little wind bunkers in there. Um, I think people are going to be bouncing around a lot. You know, you'll have to be an active center player to produce a lot of kills in there. Uh, unless you have one job of going to that center brick and trying to shut down a side, which, you know, that's, that's fun. And sometimes it works depending on how good those lanes are. But with these, uh, these new modular bunkers and the way they're kind of making the centers, I feel like the center players that are, that are active and bouncing around a lot and kind of hunting for kills are going to be really rewarded. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I think you said that perfectly. Hunting for kills. I don't think yeah. you're going to see a lot of people go up there. At least I, looking at this field, I don't expect people to go up there and just kind of sit like you would in the wall, right, and wait and wait and wait mm -hmm. to bait someone. Mm -hmm. I think this is more of a field, at least on the pro level, you know. And, and again, like if I know that I'm playing Dynasty, and I know Marcelo or Greenspan or even Yosh go up there or Blake, Tyler, you guys aren't going to be sitting still. You're going to be actively looking for for those kills and to make moves. And because there's so many bunkers that are big up there, it's going to allow you a lot of opportunity to do that. For sure. For sure. Um, you know what else I like that the NXL has been doing and, and they have it on this field as well is there's, there's more than one option or route I should say to get down the tape. Um, you know, you look at the Dorito side, you can go out to the corner and then I'm sure you can go up from there or you can go right to that tall tower and then work your way up. You can go to Dorito one or you could go up through the center like a nice little off the break move that I'm sure every pro team will try is, you know, right off the break running up towards that Dorito side can and breaking off over to that Dorito three kind of, you know, be right behind that pin, little, uh, little broken arrow play. Yeah, um, baby. And uh, yeah, baby. Um, you know, and that's a, that's a nice, quick, aggressive play that, you know, anyone listening, you guys should definitely try it this weekend, have that in your arsenal. You want to be unpredictable. You want to have plays that, you know, can win you quick points and, um, Honestly, mostly just being unpredictable and making the, the shooters not know where to put their guns. On the snake side, it looks like you could kind of do a similar thing. I'm, I'm curious to see if we'll see anyone run up to that, that big wedge on the snake side and just break off right behind the little wind bunker all the way into that 50 brick. That's a move like, you know, Mouse or Karl Murkowski. I could see them doing that. Um, I guarantee you, Karl. And it might be, it, yeah, <laughs> sure, you know, and, and it, it, it probably will be very makeable. And again, so guys, um, you know, these are, these are moves that I'm sure all the pro teams will try a couple times at practice and we might only use it once in the tournament or maybe not at all. Um, but it's good to know what you can get away with. So, you know, when I look at these layouts, I always look for those kind of routes and those, those big moves that you can take off the break by blocking out, 
um, the other team shooters. So, you know, initially we try to find out where people are going to be shooting from, which we did. And then you see, you know, what you can use to block out those lanes. Um, so I do like how, how it has all those variations. And then obviously also on the snake side, you could just go from the snake side can or the tower. Uh, I am curious to see if there will be a bounce shot off of that tower into the can. It looks like, uh, yeah. looks like they're pretty close right there. So, you know, the back center shooting off the snake side tall tower into that snake side can might be a shot or just from the snake side can off of the tall tower into the snake side can, which is his mirror. Um, <clears throat> that looks like a, a bounce shot that'll definitely be there. So everybody check that out. Make sure you don't get caught slipping uh, at the event from, from that shot. But, you know, again, we'll let, we'll let you guys know how that all played out next week. Yeah, for sure. The one thing too, that looking at this layout, uh, two quick things that kind of popped in my head uh, looking at it is the importance of running and shooting on this field is going to be big. Um, especially if you can run out and run up quickly to that Dorito side can shooting your shooting the wide guy shooting for the Dorito one or shooting for the corner. Uh, this is going to be big to run up there and, and have your gun up. And then the same thing on the snake side of that wedge. If you can run up quickly to that thing and get your gun up on either the player running to the tower or the corner, uh, it'll be big. Marcelo said this earlier. It looks like uh, those mini wind bunkers, those mini walls, will probably block your shot on the runner to the snake cor- to the snake itself. But you're only going to figure that out if you try it. Um, the other thing I just kind of saw is that snake can. If you run there quickly, you might have a pretty good cross shot right away on the Dorito one or even the the Dorito corner. It looks like there's that lane is there. Uh, and Ooh, that could be a possibly, really, yeah, possibly, that could be a really yeah. big shot if you're, you know, if you're, if you're a good shot on the break. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think that that wedge might be in the way, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll revisit that one. <laughs> next week. I'm excited. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but, uh, if, but if that's there, that's going to be, that's going to be a money shot. It's going to be, it's going to be clutch. Um, and yeah. as Marcelo said, uh, Marcelo will be practicing this weekend with San Diego dynasty with Ryan Greenspan in California. I'll be in Texas. Uh, this weekend at San Antonio X Factor Paintball Park, and we will be teaming up with our respective teammates. Um, I'll be with Grayson Goff, and Marcella will be with. Uh, was Rusty going to be in at practice? Uh, yeah, he'll be here. He gets in uh, Thursday night. So, so you'll have um, yeah, you know, five core BKI members to give you guys feedback this weekend live as we've played it, and then after we play this weekend, we will come back for content for all of our BKI subscribers. And uh, maybe a little sprinkle for you guys out there to get you uh, interested as well. Awesome. I like that. Let's, um, what would be, you know, just kind of a, well, we'll get into game plans in a second. I just want to reiterate this for teams that are practicing the layout. Um, this weekend, again, make sure you, you take risks off the break and see what you can get away with. See what is makeable on this field and be creative with the routes. Uh, go out to the corners and up from there, go up and over through the center, and then take the traditional um, the traditional way by just going, you know, bunker by bunker, first one out, you know, being over on the Dorito side in that tower and, you know, in the snake side in that can. Um, but for like a, a simple game plan, what would you, what would you, you know, just looking at this, if you were to, if you were sitting in class back in the day, like, like we used to drawing up game plans, <laughs> <laughs> where would you put the bodies? I, I think for me personally, um, I would, uh, I would want only one person in the center, and you just kind of got to choose where you want to put them, and it looks like a field where you definitely need two on each side. Okay. Um, well, I would, I would probably stack – I'd stack two guys in the back center. Um, I would have one, one shooting left – or, excuse me, one shooting towards the snake side on the break and the other player on the uh, shooting towards the Drew side more over the top. Um, and then edging out to use the can and that, that wedge to block them out. I would definitely send someone to the tower. I'd go Dorito one, Dorito tower, uh, two in the back center. And then I would send either the snake tower or the snake can. And then I would look to, uh, bump out the, uh, body that's in the back center shooting Dorito way, either up to that can or straight up to the wedge, depending on what we see. I would do the three bodies stacked on the, on, I'd have the three bodies stacked on the Dorito side first. Um, I think it's a little bit more open and your shots, uh, on that Dorito one in the, in the corner runner are a little bit better. Okay. And, and that's where I would push, okay. um, like it. is a, is a basic play. Um, I mean, I, I could is see. Is this going to be well, X Factor's game plan when we play you guys? Uh, yes. Every, every point we will go Dorito <laughs> one, Dorito tower, <laughs> two in the back center. And when the snake guys are, the snake guys up in the air, I don't know where Billy's going to go. So good luck. Nice. I like it. 
Okay, well, uh, let's see. I'm going I'm to come with a hot, aggressive game plan right now. Um, just one to try. I'm going both corners. So Dorito corner, snake corner, two in the back center, um, split guns. I want the snake side to focus on shooting the uh, the, the snake one. Um, again, I, I think that that shot's going to be there. It's just going to be difficult, and you're going to have to watch out for getting shot from somebody shooting back into the center. Um, and then the Dorito side, uh, back center, you know, that shot might not be there, so I might I might adjust him and send him out to that tower just to be heads up. Um, yeah, so we're going to go both corners, one back center shooting snake side, one to the Dorito tower, and then, uh, oh, you're going to like this, and then we're going to that Dorito side can shooting Dorito side, but the, here's the, here's the, uh, here's the flare. Ooh. Back center, snake side, the back center, snake side shooter releases right into the snake one. Bam, right away. Ooh, I like that. So, yeah, so now, you know, you, you go out to the snake corner and you draw the guns high and then your back center player, um, so it's probably going to be your, your faster, quicker guy is going to shoot and then release right into the snake one. And now you're out of that back center. It doesn't look like you are going to want to be there once the game starts progressing anyway. Um, and you have a pretty good base. You've got your guy set up in the center. You have your two Dorito players ready to attack. You're in the snake and the snake corner ready to dominate down the tape. So, uh, you know, that looks like a, a, a fun little game plan. But, again, you can't really, can't really tell where you want to put your guns until we get out there. So okay. have fun with that, everybody. Yeah. And I'll, I got, I've got one more. I had, I had my brain cooking here. So for, okay. uh, if, right. I'm gonna, if I'm going to do a, an aggressive play, um, mm -hmm. just a, a general basic one, uh, I would go Dorito 1. I would go to the Dorito can, up the center can. Uh, I would go to the snake wedge and then immediately bump to the mini wall um, right on the snake side, not the 50. Yep, yep. And then I would go to the snake corner. So Dorito one, uh, center Dorito can, uh, center snake wedge, uh, snake like corner, it. snake corner. And then I would go to the, uh, the back center would shoot right to the snake. And then he would immediately go to the snake can and look inside and listen to what he heard that went that way. And as soon as he sees his uh, center wedge player release into the mini wall, he would take his place and look inside to either go to the, the center brick or to play over the top of his uh, snake mini wall player. Yeah, Ooh, now I what? Like that play a lot. Now you what, know, baby? Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> look, we could, do, we could do this all day, which is, which is awesome. And it actually goes to show that the new, the new bunker sets are going to be really fun to play. I mean, there's just so many variations. So you have to get creative. You have to try different things. And you just have to basically make sure that you, you – this weekend when you guys go out and practice, make sure you find the spots that are crucial to, to keep your opponent out of the key bunkers, You know, whether it's the 45-yard line Dorito or that center 50 or the 50 on the snake side. You know, the spots, the hot spots that are going to produce a lot of kills, you want to find the bunkers to prevent the opponent from getting there, and then you want to find the best routes to get there. So really focus on that this weekend. Um, focus on off-the-break shooting. Find the spots where you can, your team can get the most kills off the break. Again, shooting people off the break is one of the most important parts of the game, and it's often overlooked, in the, in the, especially in the lower divisions. But even in the pro division, there's a lot of teams that struggle with shooting people off the break. And, you know, Nick, you're a shooter. I, I think uh, – you obviously appreciate that skill quite a bit. You're a really good uh, off the break shooter, and that's helped your team win a lot of events. You know, it helps. Yeah, I think you go back and you watch any tournament you want. Teams that do really well are teams that get kills off the break. So, um, you know, it just gives your team a, a huge advantage when you when you eliminate one of their other players right away. It throws their game plan off. Then they have to readjust. It doesn't just take away that player. It changes another person's job on that team to pick up that player's job. So. Shooting people off the break, super crucial. Find those lanes this weekend. And, um, yeah, man, I think uh, I think that's about it. You got anything else? No, I mean, that, that pretty much sums it up. Again, uh, Marcelo and Ryan and some of the other guys in Dynasty will be with you guys this weekend uh, as well as after for more BKI content. And then I will be in Texas uh, with X Factor, and we will report back to you guys after we play this layout um, and then look for more stuff to come. Uh, the following weekend from other members of our crew, from Greg Sewers, from Nick Laval, as they play this layout as well. Uh, and then I guess, you know, from all of us at BKI, thank you for tuning in. And please go to BKIPaintball.com to get subscribed for more exclusive content for you users out there so we can better your paintball IQ because we're getting older and we need you to step up and take our space. Hey, hey speak for yourself there. Buddy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, 
no, on that note, man, thank you guys for listening. Nick, thanks for tuning in and doing this with me. I, I enjoyed it. And uh, everybody out there, have a good practice this weekend. Let us know, uh, you know how, this, how this worked for you. All right. Thanks, guys.